There's an old saying, when ships were made of wood, men were made of steel. Come on, boys! Come on! In 1789, the crew of a British Navy ship rose up and overthrew their captain, William Bly, in the infamous mutiny on the bounty. Bly and a few loyal men were bundled into a tiny boat and abandoned in the middle of the Pacific. They should have died. Instead, they managed to sail 4,000 miles to safety. Through some of the most unforgiving seas on Earth. Big waves, big, big waves. It remains one of the greatest survival feats of all time. Now, nine men are following the same route in an identical boat, facing the same conditions, to measure themselves against history. Can the modern day man endure such hardships? Oh! Come on, lads, bail! There's nothing normal about being here. Nothing. <laughs> yes! Be careful, be careful, be careful. If we make it through, I think it's a huge triumph. Oh my god! It's a shark! We return victors! If we make one mistake, no, 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 no. It's utter, utter disaster. So far, the crew have battled fierce tropical storms. Rations have rotted. No varnish. It's been the rest, mate. Um, people uh, are falling apart. And one of their most experienced sailors has left the boat. Put your T-shirt and your jumper away now. I'm raging inside. I reckon it's best I don't want to be an asshole, Chris. Something else will happen again, and it's just not right, mate. A month into their voyage, the crew have completed 3,000 of their epic 4,000-mile journey to Timor. Directly in their path lies their hardest challenge yet, the Great Barrier Reef. Stretching for over 1,600 miles, it's the largest reef on the planet. A vast coral wall lurking just below the sea's surface. Bly's day, it was known as the Labyrinth. Oh. We need to be on the ball now, we need to be switched on. The route is getting quite tricky now. Um, we're having to navigate through reefs, we're having to navigate through small passages. So at the moment, we're approximately 70 miles from where Bly went through. Using the navigational instruments available to Bly, they're aiming for the same small island he landed on. I think definitely head for this as a reference, and then we can decide closer to the time. Probably need to steer a course around 275. Yeah, let's do it. Got that ratio? 275, please. Try and keep that course as well, mate, okay? Try and keep it exactly as we can. My job as captain is to get the men there as quick as possible because if we had another 12, 24 hours, that could be a 12 hour or 24 hour period too long for these guys. It's like to stay on course and um, I'm really struggling to concentrate now. My mind's fried. If we make a mistake now and a bit of navigation goes wrong or anything like that, we could take ourselves five days, a week out. We don't have the water for that. It's all got quite serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at these birds. Whoa! That one's massive. They're incredible. Move so well through the air. Are you hungry enough now to eat seabird? In 1789, 
Captain Bly's starving crew managed to catch a seabird, as he recorded in his diary from the voyage. I directed the bird to be killed for supper. The entrails, beak and feet, I divided into shares. And the blood I gave to the people who were the most distressed for want of food. Every person thought he had feasted. Here we go, here we go. Oh my God. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah! Oh! oh my that God, was I cool. This is the first time we've ever had something that close to us that we can touch. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh. I touched him. We touched. <laughs> I probably would have dropped the camera and had a go for him there. You know when he touched your arm? I reckon I could have got him while he was off balance. The crew have been surviving on daily rations of around 400 calories, roughly what Bly's men had to live on. The amount of food we're eating is not sustainable at all. Everyone's losing a lot of weight. I've constantly got stomach pains. We're in a sort of downward spiral. Weird. Almost feel like I'm dreaming. Just the noise of the boat and everything that goes on around you. It's almost like it's not really happening. It's weird. And I think it's brought on by no food, dehydration, cabin fever, lack of sleep, all adding up to this kind of feeling. <laughs> right now I probably couldn't tell you what kid's name. I've just seen something. It could be the start of the reef. Ahead of Ant's exhausted crew lies a tough test of seamanship. OK, hang on a bit. There it is. Great Barrier Reef. The crew's only way through is to find one of the narrow passages in the coral, a navigational nightmare as daunting today as it was for Captain Bly over two centuries ago. Not really the ideal sea state to be attempting this, is it? No. We just have to make sure we get this bang on. The person at the helm heard the sound of breakers. And I no sooner lifted my head than I saw them. The sea broke furiously over every part. Guys, let's start moving. Let's start fucking moving now. This is serious. This is where I need you to switch on. You see the white breaks? If we end up on those, the boat's torn to shreds. Stay switched on. It's quite nerve-wracking stuff because we've not had to deal with anything like this. OK, and we're looking out for another bank, sand bank, some kind of smooth channels in between. Yeah. Probably around about 12 o'clock off the bow. Right Straight ahead. ahead. Yeah, I'll okay. let you know we've got visual. OK. You can see where the reefs are breaking. We've got a bank. 10 o'clock, and the brake seems to have stopped either side of it, and it's here. OK, so pretty much into the sun, yeah? It's right there. It's well. The three-metre swell is making it difficult for the crew to keep the gap in sight. But I've got no idea where we are. We're heading towards the rock here now. We need to turn. Get that halyard down. We're just being blown onto a reef here. Quick as we can, guys. They've overshot the gap in the reef. Quick, 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 guys. To turn back, they need to reposition the sail. Sail untied. Great, up, up, up. OK, guys, stand by for a jive. Yeah, ready to go, let's go. Yeah, 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 go, 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 go. Come on, man, the rock's there. Yeah, I know, I know. Wow. Lost steerage here. 
While the sail is down, the boat is impossible to steer. Got big brakes! And the swell is pushing them onto the reef. Come on, lad, you look to starboard about two o'clock. You see the rock. Let's get to on the left. It's caught on something. Up a bit, up a bit, Rich, up a bit. Fuck, we're close to that reef. Bear away, five. More, more. Hold that. Fucking hell, this is tight. This is a good line, a good line. Boys, we are going through the Great Barrier Reef as we speak. Woo! Fucking get in there. <laughs> Just sailed us through the Great Barrier Reef, my friend. It's a lifelong dream. Congratulations. Well done, Dan. Master of my rock. Thank you, sir. That was fucking tense. Probably the most difficult bit of navigation I've ever done. This is how Bly got through the Barrier Reef. Respect to Bly. Yeah, massive respect. Being now happily within the reefs, and having promised to land on the first convenient spot we could find, all our past hardships seemed already to be forgotten. The Australian sunset. I've always wanted to go to Australia. I didn't think it'd be like this, though. Here you are. That's the first time on this boat that I felt like this crew worked so well together. Very proud to be part of this team. We just nailed this, mate. And we're all looking around this boat and thinking, I'm so glad that I've done it with you, 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 and you, and you. Chemistry here is perfect. It's amazing, isn't it, how calm it is? Now they're safely through the Great Barrier Reef, Ant's crew can enjoy a brief moment of respite. Can you imagine the relief of Bly's guys? Because they would have thought that they were safe, you know, even though Bly obviously had other thoughts other feelings, but they would have just generally thought we're, we're yeah. safe. That is mental. I can't help look at that and think, do you know what, there's a fair bit of food there. So. <laughs> when Bly made this crossing, he saw no other vessels. But two centuries on, Ant's crew find themselves in a busy shipping lane. Do you reckon they can see us? Like a tiny dot. Wheelchair in the middle of a motorway. <laughs> it smashed the boat into kindling. Yeah, and we'd be shark bait, basically. It's game over for boats and crew. Guys, I need you to be on the board now. I thought I'd be one of the strongest in the crew, but I am starting to get absolutely exhausted. We do rely on that. We shouldn't rely on them so much, but just being, it's been a really tough couple of days actually. Missing my family and my home. I live with my twin brother Raj in London. There you go, done. I'm a very city man. I'm not your caveman. I'm not the fishing guy that goes out and just eats raw fish and hunting and all that sort of stuff. I'm a very modern man. If I need the plumbing done, I'll get a plumber in. If I need the electrics done, I'll get an electrician in. I'm expecting to come back a different person. Get some sleep, get some rest. Um, myself, Comrade, and we're going to do two hours on, four hours off all the way into Restoration Island.
Bligh reached Australia in 1789, the year after the first British settlers arrived in Botany Bay, 2,000 miles to the south. He feared an attack by the native people on the mainland, so Bligh headed for a tiny uninhabited landmass that he would later christen Restoration Island. Ant's crew are following the same route. All right, chaps, wakey, wakey. You have a look in front of you, that's Restoration Island. We're here, boys. First land in a fortnight. Is that a good site, Lukey? It's a really good site, it's amazing. Where's the five-star hotel, though? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope restoration does what it says on the tin, because we all need it badly, badly. Right, guys, we're going to go on there, make sure we get plenty of rest, make sure we get plenty of food, because we are on the bones of our ass. I'm even on the bones of my ass, and I'm tired just even talking. Right, let's get the oars ready. Let's go. One, two. Bly approached the new land cautiously after one of his crew had been killed on a previous island. Oars out of the water! On the northwest side, I found a bay and a fine sandy point to land and examine if there were any signs of natives. But I saw nothing to alarm me. And, yep, but there's a fella coming. Hello there, my good man. God, I'm the captain of the Bounty's End. The captain? Yes. Oh, what do you What's want? your name, sorry? Dave. Dave, I'm Anthony. So where did you brush come from? In Vanuatu. What? Yes, we just come in from this Vanuatu. Buddy, is it? Yeah, in this thing, yeah. Shit. <laughs> so what's that, gunpowder or something? What's no, that? they're water. They're empty barrels of water, I have, you know. We're not here to cause any trouble. We're here just to get some food, All right. some water, and replenish, and then we'll be out your hair. Land! <laughs> you young, crazy heroes! 72-year-old Dave Glasheen and his pet dingo, Polly, are Restoration Island's sole inhabitants. Got any fishing gear? Yeah, we have. It's like the Australian beach bum Santa Claus. You're yeah, welcome no. to camp somewhere. The... Perfect. He's not a bad spot in here. Dave traded the city for a simpler life after losing millions in the stock market crash. This is the water, and this is it. Yeah. But I won't get any rainwater of any consequence for next year. Water's the gold of the, yeah, of of course. the wild, you know? But we will use it sparingly. When Bly's crew were here, they filled several barrels of water from a well they'd dug and made a desperate search for food. Yeah, we're pretty hungry. <laughs> You're not eating each other yet. We've been munching on ship's biscuits now um, for the last 35 days. There's rocks and salt water. There should be oysters, you know. This is probably where Bly would have come, I reckon. Everyone was anxious to find something to eat. I sent out parties that returned highly rejoiced at having found plenty of oysters. Wow! He was here in May, and the sow oysters are quite strong. Yeah. So this would be the protected side, and it'd be a lot easier here. So weird to think that he was right here. That's an oyster. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. I've never done this before. Why would I do Where would you do this in London? Come on, Resh, you've never had one, right? My virgin oyster. First time sailing, first time survival, first oyster. Oh. Oh, it's fresh. Being on these rocks, doing exactly the same thing as live, pretty special. Just, I feel like a part of history. Wow. So you're not going to starve tonight, fellas. Well done, Rish. Well done. That was good, that, isn't it? Rish is doing really well. So he is learning. He's taking everything on board. But I need him to be like that when we're low, when times are bad, when we're going through a bad patch. That's when I need Rishi to step up. The oysters Bly's crew found here saved them from starvation. But there's one man they're not going to help this time. I'm allergic to oysters. Fred, you can't eat that. Well, 
No, I can't eat that, no. Fuck. It's just doing my head in. It's so demoralising, the fact that I can't eat when everyone else is eating. And I'm, I'm not going to complain in front of them, because it's just it's not good for morale. <laughs> Those oysters are good. Bon appetit. And how nice is it to sit on something that's not fucking oh, wood? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the first hot food we've had in about 17 days. I'll never ever take hot food for granted again. It's really nice to eat a proper meal. <sighs> it's just messing me up, this. I hate it. Friday, May the 29th. The oysters we found grew so fast with the rocks that it was with difficulty they could be broke off. It's true, isn't it? <laughs> they were very sizable and well tasted and gave us great relief. Is that true as well? That was, yeah. <laughs> this being the day of the restoration of King Charles II and the name not being inapplicable to our present situation, for we were restored to fresh life and strength, I name this Restoration Island. I find that just the Crazy. spookiest, spookiest yeah. thing here in that. To the proper, proper mutiny crew. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The crew is up early, trying to find their next meal. Guys, we need to go that way. This way. Roger. If you feel the take, don't yank straight away. About two or three seconds into the run, that's when you strike. No fish. No bites. Come on, I really want to get one. All I want to do is eat, I'm so hungry. I can't eat oysters, we eat fish, but we never really catch any fish. It's down there. It's always good to forage. Across the island. Aha. Ants having a little more success. Oh, look at that. Cassava. It's like a potato, really. Even if we just get this in us tonight, that will suffice. I have to catch something. Fucking what is this? This is fucking big, boys. Fucking monstrous, mate. Oh, my God, it's a black tip shark. Whoa, mate. That's so powerful. Fucking hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fucking hell. It nearly bit my fucking leg off. Oh, my God! Oh, it's not that big. <laughs> <sighs> oh, mate, mate, careful, 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 careful. He nearly got my leg. He went for my leg. What's happening? We've got a shark! We've got a shark! <laughs> Steaks tonight, oh baby! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah. You little beauty! We're going to eat yeah. tonight, man! Yeah. 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 Tonight, we dine like kings. Yeah! Woohoo! I feel so proud of them. Looking back to day one, and they're like different guys. Being able to survive off the land, being able to survive off sea. They're like my brothers, you know? We've got to, we've got to get them to the end of this. He's a ex-Special Forces sort of tough guy. I'm like a gay doctor from London. Those paths do not cross very often. So I have to say I was a little bit apprehensive of that macho nature. But he's incredibly sensitive to the emotions in the group and he's knowledgeable, you know, sort of survival tips. I don't think we could have done this without him.
you right, Dave? Right. What you got? A little surprise. Oh, a little bit of oil. Do you know what? We could make chips with this. You know, with the cassava that we got? We could have fish and chips. Oh, thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> bon appétit. Oh, it smells great. I'm looking forward to that so much. If someone had told you at the beginning of this journey that you would have fish and chips, would you right. believe me? Freddie, guess what I've got? I've got some vinegar in the medical kit. <laughs> oh, my God, my Thank mouth is watering. This is the mutiny feast. Look at that, look, look. The skin fat on it is just going mad. It looks amazing. We're not going to beat this. Preparing us for the next leg, right? Preparing us for life. I'm seeing people develop. I'm seeing people progress. No, it's sweet. And uh, it's really rewarding. See if we can keep this momentum going. If we can, then I'll be a very happy man. Ooh. You all right? Shit. I've cut my foot. Luke. Pretty bad? Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, OK. Bastard. What happens? It's the axe. Oh, the axe. Oh, fuck, man. Yeah. Can you wiggle all your toes? Yeah. If his foot becomes infected, Ant may have to leave. Just like that. Silly bugger. There can be lots of complications. Tropical infections can get really nasty very quickly. But be so careful. It only takes a split second for something to go wrong. It gets infected. It's game over. It's the end. It's our last day on Restoration Island. Had a bit of a drama before I cut my foot open. I knew straight away I needed stitches. But four stitches, bang, and it was done. We've got to put that aside. We've still got a job to do. Whoa, whoa! Sam, that bung's come out. Should. Don't lose the pressure of water. Good spot, Rich. After three days on Restoration Island, Ant and his crew are ready to face the perils of their final sea crossing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having us, man. You're all restored. A safe journey. It's been wonderful having you, and you're all Thank you very much. Men. All right, come on then, men. Let's get on the boat. These tropical waters are teeming with bacteria. An infected cut could spell disaster for Ant. In Bly's day, Infected limbs were amputated quickly to prevent death from septicemia. The captain is dry. Thanks, guys. No worries. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Dave. See you later, Restoration Island. Hoist the main. When Bly and his men left Restoration Island, they were still very weak after over a month at sea. Yet they would need to negotiate a maze of reefs and islands to reach the nearest safe port, 1,400 miles away at Timor. Ant will follow in Bly's wake, braving northern Australia's searing heat and seas infested with saltwater crocodiles, sea snakes and sharks. So we'll be on starboard tack initially, guys, with the starboard side, right? Yeah, OK. Let's get around the corner. We can... Look, 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 look! Oh, 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 oh. Fuck you, man. What was that? That was a big shark. See these two islands here? We're going straight through the middle of them. So this is a reading from Bly's journal about going through exactly this spot. As I was passing this strait, we saw a large party of Indians, Indians running towards, running towards us, us, shouting and making signs to land. Some of them waved green branches as a sign of friendship. But there were some of their other motions less friendly. I therefore determined not to land. I know what I'd do. I'd just go straight past it. Yeah. They had no firearms. Yeah, there's no way I'd stop. It literally would have been right there, wouldn't it? Mm. This leg of the voyage, I feel more sort of connected to Bly's story than any other bit so far. 
No, I mean, it's really starting to come alive. After only a day's sailing from Restoration Island, Bly surprised his crew by stopping on a barren outcrop of rock. An island of good height now bore to the northwest from us. The shore was rocky. The water, however, was smooth, and I landed without difficulty. I named this Sunday Island. Why have we stopped here? Bly's crew were frustrated to have this break in their journey. Dan? Yeah? Come with me to this high ground, have a look over. Ants keen to explore what drove their captain to such a bleak outpost. Absolutely diddly squat. Why would he want to stop here for? I know. It's pretty barren, isn't it? Something was going on. Reesh has been told to set up camp for the night. I see absolutely no point in being here. We're wasting time. You know, we've got a mission to get somewhere. Let's carry on going. Bly's decision to spend a night on Sunday Island also led to discontent. Their fatigue got the better of their sense of duty. Some of them claimed they would rather be without dinner than go in search of it. One person went so far as to tell me, with a mutinous look, he was as good a man as myself. I therefore determined to preserve my command, or die in the attempt. And seizing a cutlass, I ordered him to defend himself. On which he began to make concessions. Just thinking why Bly would come in, and I think that it had to do with discovery. He wasn't exploring. He thought to himself, well, that's not charted, and he wanted to put his flag in it. <sighs> I've discovered this location. And then his men were so pissed off that he literally took him to an island where there was nothing. So his men hauled him on it. Boom, he got his cutlass out. I don't think Ant's going to pull a cutlass on me tonight. But it is a little bit like Bly is kind of haunting us. It kind of gives me chills. I really didn't expect to have such a similar experience to them. It's 8 a.m. and already the crew are wilting in the heat. Fuck. They want to get moving, but to escape the bay, they have to wait for high tide. People are coming down like sort of dominoes with diarrhea. Go and have a dump, mate. Yeah. There's a real chance that it can lead to sort of serious dehydration in these conditions. You know, the blazing Australian sun, and that can be really dangerous. Fuck this, it's hot. I feel really lightheaded. Physically and mentally feel my body shutting down. You look drained, mate, absolutely drained. Yeah, um, yeah. Rish is really, really down at the moment. He wants to go home. Fred, Fred, weak. We're all weak. We all start to lose it a bit. I'm feeling it just as much as the men. But I have to not show that. I have to step up as a leader. 
Finally, the tide rises. Ant and his crew are able to leave. Right, ready? All's back. One. Nice and easy, guys. Two. How are you feeling? So much better on board the boat. On that island, that was the first time I genuinely considered leaving. I think as well, a severe case of dehydration was kicking in. We all, we all had the shits. Just check that 50 litre barrel. Well, it tastes yeah. that, What's that, the water? It smells bad. Really? Yeah. It's getting that sulfurous smell. They probably rotted in the barrels. Fucking horrible. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, I just feel really sick. I just finished a glass of water, so I'm convinced that the water's gone off. That's why we've got diarrhoea, I think. We should stop drinking it. The crew need to find clean drinking water urgently. It's not looking good, so we'll be prioritising getting water. How are we looking, comrade? Where are we heading? Turtle Head in Albany. It's probably our best chance. My right, guys, we're going to be stopping some prioritised water. So we've just made this decision now. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Ant sets a course for the nearest large island. But for now, the crew must survive on milk from the few remaining coconuts. Careful, Rish. I don't want you to chop your finger off. It's so fucking dangerous, mate. Dude, 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 dude. Rish. Don't fucking cut machete with me here. Alright. And also don't, <laughs> Rish. don't cut it like that. Mate. Why? Because it can Rish, go you through to your it's hand. It's not fucking safe on land. You're not fucking safe on a boat. Well, how the fuck am I going to do this then? Just look, well, look, so look, from, here, look where my fucking legs are. Oh, you're no. no. He lost all his fucking coconut water. Oh, fucking hell. Rish is in a really bad place. Physically, he's not getting about. Um, I think that he's got literally a couple of days left in them, if I'm being honest. Forty days after being set adrift, the tired and thirsty crew have made it to Albany Island. Look at the colour of that sand. Pure white. But dry land does not guarantee safety. Look at these mangroves. You know what that means, though? Crocs. Crocs. Guys, there's things there that want to get us. We've got sharks. We've got crocodiles on the island, there's snakes, there's spiders, there's scorpions. The priority is to find a water source somewhere in this inhospitable landscape. Big spider. Oh, fucking hell. Oh. They're orbs. If you hit the bush, they'll come for you. Fuck's sake, man. No, you no, seriously, they will. Conrad, after you. Fucking yeah. hell. How are you with spiders, Conrad? Terrified. Give me a boat anytime. <coughs> oh, spider. Ah! What? Bastard. Did it get you? Ah, you bastard. They're everywhere. It's just, there's just absolutely no sign of water, mate. And nothing. It's arid, desolate, dry, horrible. Having failed to find water, when the sun sets, there are other dangers. This is crop territory. 
Nighttime routine, this is where we need to be on it, guys. There'll be a fire in the centralized location where we'll be sleeping, and we have a watch keeping an eye out for predators. Simon Croc, watch. Don't know exactly what I would do if a croc popped its head out of one of these bushes. Fuck! Ah! What the fuck is going on here? I think I just got bit by something. If that's a spider. Bad news. Oh fuck! What is it? Big sand. Ooh, nasty. Oh my god, that's so painful. Thankfully, this species of centipede is not deadly. Let's say good night. Next morning, there is only one thing on Ant's mind. Are listening, gents? Water quality. OK, I know you're hanging, but this is where it counts. Right, let's get cracking, guys. Let's try along here. I mean, I've got no idea about searching for water, but it just looked lush and green down in the corner here. The crew split up so they can search the entire island. The signs do not look good. It is dry. It's arid. Not seeing any water runoffs. There's so much green. Where's it getting its water? Under the glare of the midday sun, the crew return to camp. Let's go back. How'd you get on, Dan? Shit. I think I've done about half the island, but fuck all water, it dry as a bone. They haven't drunk any fresh water for over 24 hours. Very, very lightheaded. I keep on forgetting what I'm meaning doing, um, what I'm going to be doing, what I'm meant to be doing, rather. You look terrible, Fred. I feel terrible. Literally just had to stop myself from being sick. I can't handle this. This is the worst possible scenario. They're pathetic. Yeah, we should fucking hope. <laughs> Did you feel what he The crew can't leave the island until they find enough fresh water to see them through the next leg of their journey. To get us home, I need everyone to be on the ball. I can't get everyone home by myself. I can't do it. I need Fred to pull his fucking finger out, and I need Rish to fucking snap out of whatever fucking thing that he's in. This is shit. And if he doesn't, I'll make him snap out of it when we get on that boat. I'm done. I'm ready to fucking go home. In a last-ditch attempt to find water, the crew search the shoreline. Let's try another approach. We've been all over the island now. We've had a look for water. Can't find it anywhere. If we don't find any here, that's it.
record in an incredibly hot, dry, arid part of the world. Nothing will kill us faster than lack of water. There's something there. Come right. Yeah, down here. Found something. Oh, what have you found? Guys, we've got water here. Oh, <laughs> mate! It tastes pretty good, it's rainwater. Combat. Well done. Right, let's get crack a lacking, guys. With this lifeline secured, the crew can now ready themselves for the final crossing. I'm going into this last leg with a seriousness that any one of my men could lose their lives. It's that serious. We're sailing 1,200 odd miles to Timor. Dangerous. With the mindset of these men, it's dangerous. Next time. Goodbye, Albany. They set sail on their final leg to Timor. Fast as we can. Fast as we can. But when the wind drops, Ant faces a mutiny. If you think Koma should step up as captain, put your hand up. And the crew are on the brink of collapse. You cannot go on. The potentials can be catastrophic. Your kidneys will be fucked, your livers will be fucked. Our bodies are in shutdown mode. <laughs>